had for breakfast? You're always a cop, even when you're off duty. Your training is with you all the time, and your sense of duty. I decided to become a cop when I was about six years old. My grandfather was a cop, and so was the uncle who raised me. He was also in World War II, and I grew up hearing wild, funny stories about war and the police force. I thought being in the service and being a cop would be one romantic comedy all the way through. But a cop has to adapt to the situation, and sometimes that means you can be the victim, too. I joined the Jersey City Police Department in 1971, fresh from two tours in Vietnam. During the summer of that year, my partner, Tommy Lally, and I were assigned to the Tactical Patrol Force. We got a call that there were two burglars in a house on our beat. A radio car was going to the address, and we were to cover a likely avenue of escape. Let's grab a hold. Why climb the fence and risk wrecking our uniforms? Let them come to us. We were young and thought we were pretty hot stuff. Central, this is Mullane. We got him. Just relax and it won't be a problem. Well, what do we got here, huh? All right, let's go. When you make a bust like that, you're psyched. We had him processed and booked real quick, and we're back on the streets by 9.30. But even when our shift was over, I was still pumped. We got to celebrate, Tommy. Come on, Larry. You know I got caught in the morning. Just going to have a couple. It's not like you're going to be hung over. I'll tell you what. Maybe tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we might have something else to celebrate. Yeah, but I'm tired. How can you be tired? Because I'm tired. Oh, come on, listen. We'll go to the Down Under, right? Great music. No cover charge. No minimum. What do you say? No. Does anybody want to go to the village? No. Another time. I mentioned no cover charge. No minimum. Another time, all right, buddy? Sure. Bunch of losers. I was single at the time, so I went home. But we had a power outage. It was August, and it was hot, and I discovered my air conditioner wasn't working. So I jumped in my car, and I went to New York. I figured I could still have fun, even if no one else wanted to. I headed for a bar called Down Under that I liked to visit. It was in the East Village and featured some of my favorite folk artists. Although you're not supposed to carry your gun across state line, I took mine with me. I just figured it was dumb to go into New York at night without it. in the morning by the time I got there. The place was packed. Okay, four more. You, 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 you. Hey, what's the story? Can I get in here or not? You got a very thirsty man over here. No, back in line, buddy. I couldn't even get a drink. That's what no carpet charge got you in 71. I thought to heck with it, and I walked back to my car. Yo, excuse me, sir. You got a minute? Yeah, I got a minute. What do you want? Yeah, could you tell me how to get to the subway? Sure. Where are you going? Uh, New Jersey. New Jersey. All right. You go up here tonight. It's around the corner. But it's on the opposite side of the street, on the corner. Okay? Well, I'm, uh... Look, man, I ain't got no money. I mean, if you just sort of, like, help me out just this one time... Yeah, I've heard it all before, man. I came through the tunnel with a $10 bill, paid my dollar for the toll, and had nine singles change, which I had stuffed in my shared pocket. Just so I could get to where I'm going, I'd really appreciate it. All right. I had an easy night. 
Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. While I was giving him the money, I thought for a second, geez, if this guy's going to Jersey City, he doesn't look like a bad mutt. I'll offer him a ride. Now, I'll take it all, you What the hell are you doing? What do you think I'm doing, man? Huh? Come on. This is it happened so fast, I wasn't that petrified at the time. I really didn't think I was going to be shot. I thought, if I think the guy is going to shoot me, I'm going to telegraph it somehow. And as long as he's talking and I'm talking, I don't think he's going to shoot. I felt if I got him on my side, he wouldn't. I really couldn't see it after me giving him a buck and giving him directions and being nice. But I'll tell you, I was glad I didn't offer him that right. Please don't hurt me. I kept my elbows against my hips and my hands out so he couldn't one. get my wallet or my gun. Thankfully, my shirt was outside my pants, concealing them. Give me what? All I got in my wallet is my driver's license and some papers I need. Whenever I come to New York, I carry all my money in my shirt. I'm afraid of being ripped off. Are you afraid of being ripped off? Well, give it up, man. I'll take my wallet. Well, what good's my driver's license to you? Mess with me, man. I had to be the victim. Now was no time to act like a cop. If he got my gun or saw my police ID, he'd shoot me for sure. A lot of things go through your head. I was thinking about this defensive technique they teach you in the academy, where you grab the guy's hand if he's close to you and whisk it around. The hand is quicker than the eyes sort of move. Then I remembered I was supposed to go to a friend's house for a barbecue that weekend. I'm thinking, if he shoots me, I'm going to miss that barbecue. The things that go through your head. Really, man, you got it all, I swear. I always carry my money in my shirt. Don't be lying to me. My wife and my family starving down south. You oppressed them. Oh, man, I had nothing to do with that. I'm a college student. Oh, you're a college student. Yeah. Shut up! He wasn't hitting me hard. You be back but there's school. nothing like getting slapped in the face to make the blood start to boil. Don't you call the cops. Don't you be following me, man. Look over there. Look over there! Stay, keep looking there! The second he was gone, I took out my gun. I figured if he saw me with it, he'd shoot. But it was time to go back to being a cop. In Jersey City, you can fire a gun when your life is in danger and when someone else's life is in danger. But I still had this code. I could never shoot anybody in the back unless I had no choice. Also, I was on shaky ground with the Sullivan Act. That's the law that says you can't carry a concealed weapon unless you're licensed in the state of New York. I wasn't. I was breaching the Sullivan Act from the moment I passed through the Holland Tunnel. But now I had the gun out, and I was a cop again. In the academy, they teach you when you come around a corner to put one hand on the wall and your gun in the other. I didn't know what he was doing, counting the money or putting the gun away. I figured I'd fire a warning shot down low if he turned on me, so I just yelled. I'm a police officer! Ho! I was uncomfortable firing the gun with my right hand. I thought I'd missed him. I thought, oh no, I hope he's not playing possum. Was the guy gonna do Let something? Go I didn't know. I go with a gun! I got him with the first shot, but I didn't know that yet. It was the first shot that hit him. The blood trail started exactly where I shot him first. He took a few steps and dropped, and then he went into shock. I knew immediately that I'd hit him in the femoral artery because, believe it or not, I'd read a James Bond book years before, and that's how he killed a guy. I knew he'd be dead in minutes if I didn't stop the bleed. Call for help. I'm a cop. Get, get an ambulance and call the cops. Oh, man. Detective, if you want, I can hold your gun for you so you can get some help. Don't worry, I'll keep him covered. Not in this lifetime, pal. If you want to help, you can hold this tourniquet. We found out later that this guy was my mugger's backup. They'd been seen together earlier. We went looking for him, but we never found him. I was a kid at the time. All I could think of was, this guy's a wife and family. One minute he's slapping me, got a gun in my face. And the next I'm trying to save his life. What a world. The NYPD arrived and cordoned everything off. All the people who witnessed the incident, when they found out I was a cop, they didn't want anything to do with it. They said, hey, you did the right thing, walked away. It was fine with them. They called in emergency services to find the second bullet I fired, but they didn't. It's probably still traveling down 6th Avenue. The New York cops were great. Didn't say I'd done anything wrong. They knew they'd probably have done the same thing in my place. So I'll give him a dollar, which was stupid because I told him where my money was, right? Yeah, yeah. He grabs me, asks me for the rest of my money, pulled me into the alley right next door here. The guy lived, but one leg will always be a little shorter than the other. I talked to my uncle the next evening. 
He said, my grandfather was a cop for almost 40 years, and he never took his gun out of his holster. But I'd only been on the job a few months, and then not only shot a man, but was the first guy in the history of the Jersey City Department to ever shoot somebody in New York. But my uncle was very supportive. Still, I was the first one in a family full of policemen that ever shot anybody.